Oh yeah. No, that was... Huh. Interesting. To this question, there is a positive answer only when the individual is willing to fulfill the demands of rigorous self-examination and self-knowledge. If he follows through his intention, he will not only discover some important truths about himself, but will also have gained a psychological advantage. He will have succeeded in deeming himself worthy of serious attention and sympathetic interest. Awesome little excerpt from The Undiscovered Self by Carl Gustav Jung. That's sweet.
fulfill the demands of rigorous self-examination. Okay. Self-examination and self-knowledge. That is so cool. To this question. To this question, there is a positive answer only when the individual is willing to fulfill the demands of rigorous self-examination and self-knowledge. If he follows through his intention, he will not only discover some important truths about himself, but will also have gained a psychological advantage. He will have succeeded in deeming himself worthy of serious attention and sympathetic interest. Okay, so really in order for us to attain self-knowledge, we have to, if we don't already, adjust our value system and include ourselves within that value system, within what we value. Otherwise, we won't really put in the serious attention and sympathetic interest. Okay. So we may have to adjust how we value ourselves and what we deem valuable in another person. Because often, I think, how we judge others, even if we don't know we're doing it, is how we judge ourselves. So, as an example, if you find that you judge people on their wardrobe, it's very likely that you're going to judge yourself on how you dress and then compensate accordingly, even though you might not even know you're doing it. Okay, so we may have to adjust how we value ourselves and what we deem valuable. So how, just how we value ourselves and therefore, uh, maybe not therefore, I guess the question is, if you value something in yourself, do you automatically value it in another? I mean, my initial impression is yes. You know, if I value my, value the degree of empathy that I have, so would I value it in someone else? I think so at least at the level of being able to relate. Okay, so to this question, there's a positive answer only when 
the individual is willing to fulfill the demands of rigorous self-examination and self-knowledge. If he follows through his intention, he will not only discover some important truths about himself, but will also have gained a psychological advantage. He will have succeeded in deeming himself worthy of serious attention and sympathetic interest. Okay, yeah, so in order to actually attain and even get on the path of discovering self-knowledge, we have to deem ourselves valuable enough to begin the search for that self-knowledge. Okay, okay. He will have set his hand, as it were, to a declaration of his own human dignity and taken the first step towards the foundation of his consciousness, that is, towards the unconscious, the only accessible source of religious experience. Interesting. He will have set his hand, as it were, to a declaration of his own human dignity and taking the first step towards the foundation of his consciousness. Okay, so the foundation of, okay, so it's saying that the unconscious is the foundation of the conscious. That is certainly not to say that we call the unconscious what we call the unconscious is identical with God or is set up in his place. It is the medium from which the religious experience seems to flow. And what's the definition of religious? Pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. Where was I? So once again, this is uh, chapter six from The Undiscovered Self by Carl Jung. Love this kind of work. I'm really enjoying his work so far. And I think it's something that everyone should read. Honestly, this stuff is gold. Gold, Jerry, gold. So what we get, I don't know what this type of is the medium from which the religious experience seems to flow. That's interesting because the word religious and I don't think it's without um, reason, is often associated just with an organized religion, you know, belief in a certain God or something like that. But I like it's sort of the tertiary definition here off of Mr. Google, a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. The way I normally consider that is, I would consider myself religious uh, in the attempt to find what is the best way to live. And then what is, you know, what is best, what is a way to live? Those are other questions. Uh, where did I lose my place? Where did I? Yeah. 
Buddha. As to what the further cause of such an experience may be, the answer to this lies beyond the range of human knowledge. Knowledge of God is a transcendental problem. As to what the further cause of such an experience may be, the answer to this lies beyond the range of... Okay, so it can never really be known what the cause of this type of experience can be. Which is interesting because maybe that's why it just feels so profound to someone that has that kind of experience. You know, it's just that like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Where is this coming from? The religious person enjoys a great advantage when it comes to answering the crucial question that hangs over our time like a threat. He has a clear idea of the way his subjective existence is grounded in his relation to God, in a, quotations. I put the word God in quotes, and this is reading from the actual book. I put the word God in quotes in order to indicate that we are dealing with an anthropomorphic idea whose dynamism and symbolism are filtered through the medium of the unconscious psyche. So our unconscious is the, is the medium of that experience. And the dynamism of the word God or the idea of God, that dynamism and symbolism is filtered through the unconscious. And then I guess that dynamism and symbolism can be seen just by the diversity and differences of all different types of religions and religious experiences. So having a clear idea of the way his subjective existence is grounded in his relation to God. So it's kind of like uh, whatever your God is, it's beneficial because um, because you're grounded in whatever that ideal whatever that ideal value or or belief is. So you're grounded in that, which gives you something to strive for. Anyone who wants to can at least draw near to the source of such experiences, no matter whether he believes in God or not. Okay. Without this approach, it is only in rare cases that we witness those miraculous conversions of which Paul's Damascus experience is the prototype. The reli that religious experiences exist no longer needs proof, but it will always remain doubtful whether what metaphysics and theology call God and the gods is the real ground of these experiences. Okay. So what metaphysics and theology call God and the gods will be in question as the source of those religious experiences. Is so cool. Okay, so I guess the religion, the religious experience is not reserved for those who are religious. I should, no, no, I should rephrase that. 
They're not reserved for those that believe in a god. And what Jung is saying, it's an anthropomorphic, a very dynamic and symbolic concept, God, and it's filtered through the unconscious, the medium of the unconscious psyche. Hmm. So without this approach, it's only rare in cases that we witness those miraculous conversions. Hmm. Interesting. This book, though. What's up, what's up? If you just joined, feel free to say hello. Along with the little display we've got here, I am kind of just looking through this book, which is on screen there, The Undiscovered Self by Carl Gustav Jung. I mean, this work is unreal. Everyone should read this stuff, it's so cool. And once again, anything that was heard, for me reading anyway, was from, boom, this book, The Undiscovered Self. Tonight's stream is sort of just a chill discussion stream. Last night was the actual push-up kind of demo and live workouts. So you can check that out as a VOD. Um, but of course, you know, certainly open to questions and all that kind of thing regarding push-ups in general or anything related to, to calisthenics. All right, so what am I taking from this? So, okay. idea of God is a very dynamic and symbolic one. It's very dynamic. And it is filtered. Filtered through the medium of the unconscious. happening.
Okay, very dynamic and symbolic one is filtered through the medium of the unconscious. And not limited to those. Question is idle actually and answers itself by the re by reason of the subjectively overwhelming numinosity of the experience. And answers itself by reason of the subjectively overwhelming numinosity of the experience. had it is seized by it and therefore not in a position to indulge in fruitless metaphysical or epistemological speculations. Absolute certainty brings its own evidence and has no need of anthropomorphic proofs. the attribution of human characteristics or behavior to a god, animal, or object. Okay. Attribution of human characteristics or behavior to a god, animal, or object. Okay, so that's like Toy Story. You're anthropomorphizing. So anyone who has it is who has had it is seized by it and therefore not in a position to indulge in fruitless metaphysical or epistemological speculations. Absolute certainty brings its own evidence and has no need of anthropomorphic proofs. I guess proof to the to the subject from a psychological standpoint. In view of the general ignorance of and bias against psychology, it must be accounted a misfortune that the one experience which makes sense of individual existence should seem to have its origin in a medium that is certain to catch everybody's prejudices. Hmm. So hold on. 
Right, so it's like it must be here counted a misfortune that the one experience which makes sense of individual existence should seem to have its origin in a medium that is certain to catch everybody's prejudices. Yeah, okay. So it's unfortunate that the one thing that can confirm it is certain to catch everybody's prejudices. That's the whole, okay, that person, they're experiencing it. Well, why can't I, or why, why haven't, why can't I share what you experience? And then all, or all they're just crazy. Conscious, if not regarded outright as a sort of refuse bin underneath the conscious mind, is at any rate supposed to be of merely animal nature, in quotations. In reality, however, and by definition, it is of uncertain extent and constitution, so that overvaluation or undervaluation of it, it is groundless and can be dismissed as mere prejudice. see so since it's so uncertain to us if we overvaluate or undervaluate it and kind of attribute it maybe to things that seem underwhelming or undervaluable or extraordinary then it can just be tossed aside
Playing here. I guess still best of three uh, is it Drake's. I'm not too far from mono blue tempo. I have two Tempest Gins. And I just need Siren Storm Tamers. Oh, I can get one. Oh, I have three. Okay, so I just need one more. All right, so is it just two Tempest Gins? Okay. play here. Maybe mono red. Actually, what is this deck? Let's see what's in it. On the draw, sad days. I mean, this is way too slow. Oh, this is brutal. Well, we've, uh, I mean, it's not even a wizard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Really? Wow. Well, this is not good. In another land, excellent. Shock, light up the stage is probably just going to get countered. Tap out for Teferi. Um, 
Whoops. Oh, this feels so bad. <laughs> oh, like, honestly, this will just get countered. Oh, wow. I mean, okay. This is so bad. <laughs> oh, let's. I guess that was the beginning of combat. I can't play it. If we had Banefire, I guess that would be decent, but I think now we're just dead. They have eight cards. <laughs> this thing's so dead. Mortified or cast down. Sure, you do your searching. Let's go, little man. Um. Like, there's no way that thing's gonna get in for successive attacks. Like, it's just not gonna happen. So we need to somehow just get, like, lucky with Experimental Frenzy and Yep. All right, forget this. No way we're winning that one. Banefire's coming in, treasure maps are coming in. I'm on the play. I think I can shave a couple. Our one experimental frenzy. Shocks are kind of, I mean, fight with fire. Lyra will come in. Let's get rid of, oh, no, I want that Bane fire. What do I need to cut three cards? I think I cut one Frenzy. Oh. Maybe a wizard's lightning. Like land on the play, I want the land. What was that, a mulligan to four? Oh, we're playing first. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Okay, whatever. 
Interesting. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Should have played the treasure map. What am I, crazy? Because if they have another Thought Erasure, then... Or Duress, I'm going to take that. Okay. Wow. Okay. Oh, I didn't set my stop. think so. Four cards. Okay. You can take that. Um, I think that's pretty good. I wish I could get some damage in. Yep, sounds good to me. I mean, do I want to sacrifice in case I get a haste creature? Okay, I mean, they might be in trouble here. Like, if they hit a wrath, then... Yeah, okay. Wow, three pyromancers, look at that. Okay, um... Like these treasure maps are so good. Okay, that's actually really good. Okay, so we should have it. 
One, two, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, never mind. I mean, if we have it. All right, I was gonna say that would have been brutal. Okay, I'm on the draw. What do I wanna do? On the draw, so maybe, do we cut a land? I think so. I mean, cutting a land and then adding another four drop doesn't feel great, but we wanna keep our treasure maps. That'll help with mana. Have the fight with fires for Lyra. I don't think anything else will be useful. Or do we want our fourth frenzy? Hmm. I like the bane fires. I think three is good. All right, being on the draw feels bad, but after a mulligan to four of the first game, you know, at least we pulled out a win. Okay, I'll take this. This is pretty good. As long as we get some land love. We like having the one drops. <clears throat> Go for it. Taking the wizard's lightning. Ugh. Uh, that puts a sorcery in, so. Well, we don't have, let's see. I think I just played both of these. I mean, they know what we have, so we need to draw land off the top here. I presume they're gonna hit their third land. Something's gonna get mortified. Okay, sure, whatever. So, moment of craving, I think, is coming out. This is bad. Okay, so, we attack the moment of craving something. Do we just attack with... They take three, gain two back at lightning strike. Something's gonna get moment of craving. Yeah, okay, so we'll respond with this. Gonna keep this firebrand up. Okay, so no wrath. We need a land. Another lightning strike, okay. So I presume they don't have another moment of craving. It's gonna attack. And turn, if they have the fifth mana, well, they would have played the untapped mana. So if they draw one off the top and play Teferi, this is kind of bad because we're just falling behind here now. Okay, so I think we lightning strike here. Like we've got to just push it and hope we get there. They have two lands. Okay, that's really good. So we get them down to six. I bust in the Chain Whirler. Unless they maybe syncopate it. I can hit to Fairy. Bring it down to three. The Chain Whirler, bring it down to... I don't think, I think we just gotta go for the face here.
I mean, is playing the Chain Whirler worth it right now? If they Wrath, we draw land. Because I don't want to get Kaya's Wrath. But if we do, we do. Because what if I just stop? It can get absorbed anyway, or countered. Let's just get the one damage in. Land would be nice. Okay, nope. I mean, if they can't do anything about this, it's lethal. So let's just throw it out there. Okay, that's fine. Oh, give me a land. Okay, that tells me they don't have a counter spell. Okay, they have the moment of craving. So this is where it gets really hard. Like, shouldn't he have used Discanta and then untapped Discanta? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, this is brutal. There's that one land that we should have included. Yep. Go for it. This is brutal. Okay, well, not drawing land hurt us quite a bit, as it normally does. Yay, we're on the draw. This is not awesome. Sure, it's a bunch of one drops, but then we just blow out our hand. This is better. Yeah. That chain whirler's juicy. I guess it depends on what we're playing. You slam it. Take that, Mr. A knife. Oh, Golgari. Yipes. So, Wild Growth Walker will presumably be coming down next turn. So, let's just hope that. I mean, first that it doesn't, but it probably will. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That Steamkin would have been nice. But I don't think this Chain Whirler is long for the world. So do we just throw all of this at their face? Three, five, six, seven, eight damage. Like I want to have two of these in the bin so the lava runner gets haste. Oh wait, what am I doing? 
Why did I think that that... Ugh, anyway. Wouldn't be three mana. Awesome. Okay, well... This is interesting. They won't block. Yeah. I guess they'll just take, I don't know, light up the stages, burn spells. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Just hope it's three lands. <laughs> okay, it was not a quick decision. Oh, two wizards lightnings? Oh. So they didn't take... Oh, okay. Sure. I mean, do I get rid of the Pyromancer? I don't... Because if I draw light up the stage and I need to do damage to them to get spectacle cost, that's kind of nice. Or do I take out the Pyromancer now? With the Firebrand. So they go to seven. Um, well, we take that out. They go to six. We have a lightning strike. I think we just use this to get rid of the Thief of Sanity. Do this, get rid of you, and then attack in for two. See if we can get there. They have five cards, so. All right. Experimental Frenzy would be nice. I guess that's to surveil. <laughs> okay. Um, like, let's see. Maybe we can attack. If they just block, then whatever. But if we get the damage in, that's nice for spectacle cost. Okay. Another light up the stage is nice. Okay, so how do we do this? Um, they don't have Raskas. Like, I guess we just attack. We light up the stage. Huh! <laughs> Light up the stage. Okay, that'll do. All right, we got there. So sideboard, I have no idea what they're playing. Well, I have an idea, but... So... I didn't really see much. They may have some, like, wild growth walkers. I think it's just Sultai mid range, but okay, we'll maybe get rid of a couple of these. I want to keep the shocks for the thieves. Fight with fire, do I need those? I think we take two lava coils over that. Um, one land. 
We're at 60 cards. I think this is okay. We're on the draw. Like these lava runners seem a little worse. Let's just put a bane fire in. Just in case. Just in case we need to just get over the the end zone line. Uh, so I gotta think that like was I, I gotta want like was that just a horrible draw for them? I didn't see any Jade Light Rangers, any Wild Growth Walkers. Am I gonna keep this? Sure, I'll keep this. I like having the experimental frenzy. Okay, I don't like having two necessarily. All right, I don't know what this is. This is unusual. Lenoir and Vraskas, okay. Another Yoshino. Get this out. I think we get the uh, Steamkin out. So we can hopefully... Like Wizard's Lightning would be nice, because then we can play the third land cast the Pyromancer, then cast the Wizard's Lightning. Man, these things never survive. Basic land card, yeah, I'll take that. Okay, there's another one. So, let's get some value from these. And next turn we have Experimental Frenzy. That's good. That's good. I guess I do like having to. <laughs> um, that's five. Maybe I just play the Frenzy. Do I play the land though? That's always the question. I don't think so. Because what am I getting out of it? maybe a one drop but then I can just if there's a land on top I can play it then oh it's a chain whirler okay well they're quite hesitant so doesn't look like they have much to deal with this They have Vraska's in the... Oh, okay. Do we get in? I think we just swing with both. They want to trade. Okay, I play light up the stage. this um I think we save this no because we'll draw it but what will it do really like I can save it maybe for their end step I mean, we have, what do we have, five lands. OK, 
Okay. Good buy. You gain two. I take back the two. Pyromancer goes in hand. That's good. So four, oh man. So we can blow it up and then one mana left. That's not really doing much. I think we'll be okay. I draw the land. I just don't think there's much that they can do. Hydroid. I don't know what this deck is. <laughs> so if they do that, they can Hydroid for what? Okay. Okay, we do that. And then I guess we can just swing in. Okay. GG. Gold tier two. Climbing up to, what is it, platinum? Slowly. Yeah, we're on the draw. Okay. Space Harley fast. Van Dam. Damn. and then save the shock for maybe a uh, Merfolk Branch Walker. Okay, that's out of range. We can do this. Like we can play the Chain Whirler. I don't think we do that yet. Play this. And then hopefully we can, next turn we can somehow combo in order to kill the Thorn Lieutenant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, we'll play this guy. Shock. Okay, fine. And then, like, we'll just go in with this, I think. To block or not to block? All right, no block. So they are stuck on land, which is real nice. Okay. Okay, do we just slam the frenzy here? I think so. Like Steamkin's nice, but experimental frenzy's nice.
Draw on the Pyromancer. Yeah, okay, well, now they will have no shortage of land. No. Wizard's Lightning's good. And do I just toss that at their face? Okay, that's good. Maybe we can play a Chain Whirler here. And another Frenzy. This is just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> like, that's insane. What do you even do? Whoa. Play this. Um, I guess we can just do this and then attack with everything. This guy doesn't gain life or anything. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, good game one. So big things in this deck. So let's see, um, on the draw, shocks don't seem like they're gonna be great here. What, I mean, Elvish Rejuvenators or whatever, that's just to get land for them. I think we bring in Lava Coils, Fight with Fires. Um, even Banefire is probably not that bad. So then, shave a couple of these. No, that's not what I wanted. Bring in the Banefires. Do I want two? Yeah, gonna bring in the land, because, I mean, I don't know how quickly it's gonna be. I mean, they're looking to ramp up and then just get big things on the battlefield and just smash my face. Um... Okay, uh, turn two, I play the Steamkin, and then turn three, the Pyromancer, light up the stage. Don't really have removal here, which kind of is not good. Four lands, doesn't feel great, but again, I think we're gonna be going a little bit slower here. All right, that's pretty good, I suppose. We'll be able to um, mod win. Now they're frenzy. Okay, we do this. Chain Whirler would be great. Okay, I think things are going a little bit better for them now. Chain Whirler would be really good. Uh, okay, I guess not so good now. No blocks. Okay, so I think uh, if I lose this, I'm going to bring in... Um... If I attack and they double block, what does that mean? Like, do I care? What does this thing do? Like, they probably wouldn't want to sacrifice that, but then again, I'm not going to attack because they're swinging in for a lot. So the fight with fire is nice because we can take out Marwin. Three, it will be a four mana. 
They can't get rid of the steam kin. Okay, I see what's going on here now. Okay, so now it's out of range. So the fiery cannonades are looking pretty good here. Do I want to trade? Yep. I mean, it's out of range. Like, I might as well play the fight with fire, but... Like, I can do this and then play the Wizard's Lightning to take out Morrowind. Like, doesn't feel great, but... It's the biggest thing they got, and we're gonna have to deal with it, so... Problem is, they're probably just going to keep chucking out huge things. Like this guy. <laughs> Another Wizard's Lightning. That's pretty good, I guess. I can start taking these out. Problem is, it's not going to their face, which is not good for us. Um, Experimental Frenzy. Let's get it online. No attacks. Oh, there he is. There's the big man. I mean, how do I even deal with this? Can I even deal with this? Ugh. Another Carnage Tyrant, excellent. Um, no blocks. Like, I just honestly want to see what happens with this uh, experimental frenzy. That's why I'm still playing. And another land. Okay, so we can uh, move on. I doubt we were doing 15 damage. Anyway, but... Alright, so we're on the play. Um... I think these fiery cannonades are pretty good. The lava coils are good. I'm going to shave one. Like again, I like bane fire because it could get us over the top. Can just cut that land. Okay, we just gotta hope we have a gas hand and just get out really quickly. Where did the music go? Oh, I'll be on the play. This is not really a gas hand. Like maybe the, the removal is decent because it gets rid of their ramp. Um, can I win with this hand? Like what am I looking for? Like three lands, a two drop. But I think I am looking for some removal to deal with their elves, so 
Let's go for it. Okay, they've mulliganed to five. All right, that's good for us. Will they toss the Pelt Collector? No, they will not. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to take out the Llanowar Elves here because I suspect they don't have a lot of land. Whoa, what was I doing? No, this. Ah! They'll probably want to use that lane or elves to ramp. If they block here, okay. I was going to say if they block. Okay. Two cards in hand. Like, realistically, I can lava coil, but then what? I'm getting in for four damage, the Steamkin's a 2-2, but then I can potentially deal with something big. I'm not going to play it. What's them not blocking telling me? Okay, they have a lot of life, yeah. Or they're not losing a lot. Like, I think I keep this Lava Coil. I have a feeling. Okay, well, unfortunately, it was just slightly bigger, so... What do we do here? I think I take out the Pelt Collector. There are two twos, no attacks, and then I've just got to hope all right, see so they're drawing a lot of cards. This could be them turning the corner. Interesting. Okay, so if they block, let's just slam with everything. I mean, they probably have something big to replace that, but... What is happening? Okay, that is a perfect draw. Um... Like, Banefire is useful.
Unless they can gain a lot of life or something. Okay. Like, I do have Bane Fire, so. Okay, so we play this. Any burn spell or that. Okay, we did it. Experimental Frenzy is a ridiculous card. Can we get to tier one? creatures you control. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, Mono Red, give us some love. Pretty good on the draw. A river that is meandering. Slam it. Slam it. So three mana, Mortify comes, all right, it's tapped. Okay. So that, I can double shock to give the Lava Runner haste or I can shock once, play both. I think I just need to get as much damage in as I can. If they wrath me next turn, then they wrath me. Okay, that's something. Okay, so that's Control Esper. So let's see, we're going to slow things down a little bit. Shocks aren't going to be great here. Going to want treasure maps, Bane Fires, Fight with Fires. I mean, I'll even take the land. So that's four cards I need to cut. Wizards Lightnings? Maybe 
the Steamkins. I don't know, the Steamkins don't feel as good here. treasure map but I don't know this isn't great the third land but we're gonna have let's take it yeah and we're just gonna look to hopefully Do I want the Firebrand or the Treasure Map? I think the Treasure Map. I want to get that out before a Thought Erasure or a Counter Spell come out. Didn't set the stop. stage. Um, I don't think we play that yet. I want to save the scry. Okay, they bend a mortify. So they're confident. So they're just waiting to... Um, I'll take that. So they're short on lands. This is good for us with the Scanta though, I and the Revitalize. It's very, very unlikely they don't. Okay, they've been to land. So what? Oh, maybe it was a, a shame concede. Probably did that by accident. And we get to gold one. Tempest Gins, Dominaria. Ah, oh, the wrong gin. Sad days. Okay.
Dear diary, today my heart leapt when Agent Scully suggested spontaneous human combustion. Kevin, aw oh, man, I blocked off the full name. Kevin, thanks man, thanks for the follow. Let me, uh, let me fix this. Hmm. Where are you at?
Oh man, where'd it go? Mm. There it is. There it is. That should be higher. Where are you at? Kevin Dawson 13. There it's at. Thanks for the follow. And if you've hung around, what's going on? It's been push-up week this week. Last night was an actual live workout, but uh, tonight's just more discussion-oriented. Played some magic. Whoa. Listen to some good tunes. This song's awesome, by the way. The song is called Lock by Pilot, P-Y-L-O-T. Great tune. So that video I got playing there is a progression video that I did a while back um, from the incline push-up to the one-arm tripod variation. And I'm hoping to do another push-up video. It won't necessarily be a progression, but it'll be various demonstrations of uh, different push-ups, push-up types, kind of as a way to show people all the different techniques and that kind of thing so they can add a little bit of variety to their workouts. There's a lot of different variations out there which are really cool. So people should know about them. And I can actually put up the, I'll put the progression description in where the PB half marathon is. So that's your typical um, push up progression. Not all of these are in that video. I, in any of the videos I've done so far, it's normally just um, the path that I took personally. So it might skip a progression or it might start at a different place. Like I didn't do wall push-ups or really kneeling push-ups. I did and still do a lot of incline push-up variations, but My one-arm push-up game has deteriorated over the past couple years just because I've put focus elsewhere, but it's all good. Can't have everything. Stats, PB half marathon. Get that back up there. And of course, new word of the stream recrudescence. the recurrence of an undesirable condition. That one was 
found in Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. One of the books on screen there, the one in the middle, of course. Not really the type of stuff I go for normally, but it's heralded as one of the best books ever written. So, I mean, I gotta read it. It's just the way it is. So there I do two Jace, one is a charm, and then um, growth spiral. Okay, so I think it's about time. Um, 
Elevate Your Craft is on YouTube as well, uh, all one word. And of course on Twitch, the handle is Kasmanasty, K-A-S-M-A-N-A-S-T-Y. Check out those books there that I have, uh, that I, I'm currently reading, uh, the hard copies of, but uh, one is uh, The Undiscovered Self, which is the one that I was actually reading from at the beginning of the stream and sort of like analyzing, I guess, trying to break down for my own use. Uh, Madame Bovary, which is fiction, and then Brave New World, which, many, many people know about sort of a dystopian look at the, the future. I'm not too far into it. I'm only about 30, 40 pages in, but I don't know a lot about it myself, but definitely well-known book out there that's uh, had some praise. But actually the person that sold it to me at the store, I do buy books and I will continue to, to buy books, hard copies anyway. She didn't like it. So I don't know. Uh, but once again, uh, the, the page on YouTube is Elevate Your Craft, all one word. Um, and then uh, Kasma Nasty is the Twitch handle. And um, yeah, latest vlog, number 32, where I'm kind of talking about my journey, uh, the mental and physical aspects that I'm experiencing myself on my journey to the marathon. May 5th, a little nervous in all honesty, but we'll see. I'm going to do my best. But that's it. I still have to think think about what I'm going to do for the next live workout. It'll probably be midsection holds, um, but uh, do stay tuned for that. And that's it for me. So, um, where was it? Kevin Dawson 13, if you're still there hanging out, thanks again for the follow. I hope to see you around again soon. And to everyone else in the world of the internet, good night.